All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with tonight's NASCAR Cup Series post-race media availabilities. We are now joined by Jeff Gordon, Vice Chairman of Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff, obviously a very special win here tonight for Hendrick Motorsports at Martinsville Speedway, the site of the team's very first victory 40 years ago. If you would start us off just taking us through the emotion um, of this victory here tonight and the significance, not only to the team, but to you personally. Yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously pretty surreal. Um, you know, I felt like I was in the car there with about 60, 50, 60 laps to go because it, it reminded me of when you're leading and you feel like you're, you're going to do something really, really special and you start thinking about, you know, the moment and what it means and you start getting choked up a little bit. And then I was like, stop, stop, stop. I can't think that. can't think that. we got a long way to go here. And uh, usually <laughs> it's not that easy and, and it wasn't. So, but... Um, no, you know, there's just so many things wrapped up in the emotions of what today meant from from just the time spent with, with Rick and Linda planning for 40th anniversary and talking about all of our drivers who have won and what Martinsville means to this company and, and planning, the, you know, this day and having all of our folks here. And, and then the day comes, you know, and the weekend comes and, and you just go – you know how in the world did it did it all happen like this uh, i mean it, i know our folks are, are are super talented and they work really really hard um and i know that you know i'm kind of glad we got beat kind of bad last year in in, in uh, the fall because i think that that really made them go to work and um and, and get ready for this event so I, I don't even know where to begin honestly there's just so many things that um that, that are special you know, I just immediately looked up on the hill and saw all those red, ruby red shirts just going nuts. And now they're out there waiting to, to have a, a picture with uh, our whole organization. You just, you just cannot plan it any better and script it any better. And, of course, when I talked to Rick, you know, just hearing his, his excitement and joy uh, of, of how special this was, how proud he is of us and, and this uh, incredible legacy that he's put um, you know, in, in kind of our hands to uh, to nurture and take care of and, and try to keep it going. All right, we're going to go ahead and go p open it up to questions. We're going to start front here with John Newby, and we'll work our way around the room. Thank you. John Newby, NBC Sports. So Williams won nine of the last 44 races. I was just curious, from your perspective, I mean, what is the biggest factor in him starting such a tear? Yeah, it's, it's a great question just because, you know, when you look at his background, you look at how he got here, um, you know, and how challenging and difficult this car is. Um, you, you my, I mean, of course, first, I just, I, everybody talks about how hard he works, but he really does. I mean, the whole team, I think, really goes deep into the details and I think because Williams willing to, to, to do that then Rudy pushes him and then he pushes Rudy and, and goes down the list of the engineers and everybody that takes to bring fast race cars but the pit crew is executing well too so right now they're in this this like mode of I don't want to say you know cruise control it's not cruise control but they're just in sync they just believe in one another they go to the racetrack to win and I think they're pretty disappointed qualifying um, but um, but then but practice went really well and, and they just you know, made a few adjustments and and just battled all day today because it wasn't easy to pass and um, you know so so you just you just say to yourself well one is just super talented he wants it really bad he works really hard at it um, and he's got a great team around him and that's as a driver that's what that's what you you hope for right you hope you get in that position to showcase what you're capable of doing in the right equipment the right team okay and then just kind of following up on that the last few weeks you know rudy and william were both very blunt about their struggles at richmond martinsville does it make it more satisfying from your perspective seeing them finally you know i know he's won at martinsville before but getting through and just kind of breaking through with that dominant final stage um i mean listen you know you 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 want to win at every track. You want to win early. The Daytona 500 is amazing. It's a great way to get the season started, but it, it's not what you consider, you know, the the really the real kind of meat of what it takes to win a championship. So I, I think they realize how important um, the tracks that that you know they've struggled on mean to to the championship, especially this one. Uh, so. 
what I just love their 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 way of going about it, you know, and and it's fun to watch, and and they they they're not going to stop till they win a championship and till they win another one after that. So um, really proud of those guys. Let's go to Kelly Crandall next. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Jeff, two things. First off, how many people were off of turn two? Do you know? Larson said it was like 1,500. I mean, that's the last number that, that I heard. I mean, that's, that's employees, family members. Um, the, the coolest part about this whole thing is, is that, one, Rick agreed to do it. Clay, uh, you know, opened it up to be able to do. Um, but, but also, it wasn't just, hey, you know, come for free it was it was bring a family member and if you want more tickets then we we got a really good uh discounted rate on more tickets and they bought more right so i mean we expected you know i don't know maybe 500 people uh and and you just don't know until you put that invite out to to the group and they start um rsvp and then i remember you know one day it was 400 and the next day it was 700 and the next day it was 900 and it just kept we're, we every day we're like well we're gonna have 700 oh no, oh oh really 900 <laughs> so you know it's just to see our folks um rally behind this this um milestone and this this moment this day and get on buses early this morning and come up here um and and you know they listen the music was going they were partying up there pretty early so they had a good time and uh, to be able to to the, cap that off with with the victory uh you know like what this is going to do for our company uh, is incredible right to be able to have them that engaged with a day like today our history but also making history at the same time what you said a minute ago about um, you thought or you felt like you were inside the car the last 50, 60 laps. I'm sure it's not the first time that you've been on since you've retired that you've you know envisioned driving. But to have that emotional of a response because of the moment, have, have you had that one before where you really felt like you were in the moment and what it would be like to be in the driver's seat? And, and it's when I say that it's it's. It's not even the driving part, it's the emotion part, right? It's, it's what does it mean to you about working with your team and how hard you know that they work and what the moment means, you know, like this accomplishment. There's not a person in our organization didn't realize winning today how, how much that was going to mean to Rick Hendrick, Linda Hendrick, to Hendrick Motorsports. Um, and, and gosh, I mean, you look at William, he's been stepping it up at the big, the big milestone wins, too, for this company. He won 300. Matter of fact, I know I got to throw out a, a – Rudy, am I wrong in saying this? That was the, the chassis from the 300th win? It was, yeah. Yeah, so – I don't know. You can. <laughs> well, we, we tried to get it back, didn't we? <laughs> they wouldn't let us. But uh, you know, so it's just um, it's just super cool things and stats and and thing. You know, so much that that's contributing to what makes days like today special. I, I, listen, I didn't know how, if I was going to like being in this role, working as much as I am. Um, you know, meaning these guys work hard. I don't work that hard, but from being a driver to a basically a, a desk job and being in the office every day uh you know that's that's not where i envision my life going but days like today and and weeks like this and years like what we're already off to and and you know celebrate makes it like beyond what i could ever imagine and, and dream of so i'm in i'm in like the ultimate position and these guys you know make us all look good so it's it's cool it's fun to be in that uh, in that role right now before we continue we've also now been joined by rudy fugel crew chief of the number 24 hendrick motorsports chevrolet we will go next to jacob seelman Jacob Silman, Race Face Digital. Um, I'll start with Jeff. When you joined Hendrick Motorsports in 1992, that you know there was some success there, but could could rookie Jeff Gordon or early Cup Series career Jeff Gordon have ever envisioned the journey that this team would take and where it is now? I mean, I, of course I couldn't, you know, I wasn't thinking that that far ahead and that deep. Uh, I just wanted to, to drive race cars and try to get in the best equipment I possibly could. And, uh, you know, 
if you know much about the story, I mean, one of my roommates at that time was working at Hendrick Motorsports in the engineering department, R and D department, and and um, he kept telling me, man, I'm telling you we're on to something, like new chassis and and just cool things that they were doing, and he was always telling me about how amazing Hendrick Motorsports was. And then it was just like a year and a half later, I'm sitting in front of Rick Hendrick talking to him about driving his race car. And of course, I didn't have the ability to know what they had beyond my my, my uh, roommate, but Ray Everham was a guy I trusted that, that knew better than anybody. And I'll just never forget the first time I talked to him after he visited Hendrick Motorsports. And he's like, if you can't win there, you can't win anywhere. So the resources and and you know the pieces were in place. Um, maybe they were just on the cusp. But I mean, I, I remember watching Ricky Rudd you know win races and and come so close to win the championship before I got there. And so I think they were right there, and they had won some big races. It was just putting all the pieces together to put it into a, a championship caliber um, organization. But you know, once once that happened, to me. It's just never slowed down. It's never stopped since then. So, no, I certainly couldn't imagine in '92 when when you know I signed with Hendrick, um, but uh, and and I don't think a lot of people did. As a matter of fact, I got criticized for making that that move. If if you if you know the history, and so you know, but to me, I only know one home, and this place, like it's just amazing, right? Every day I walk through these. The buildings and just in awe of of what's been created there by by Rick and Linda and and what these guys do with the resources. And for Rudy, w- William came in here yesterday after qualifying, and, and I could tell he was frustrated with where they were starting. But even amid that, he was so confident in the race car that you guys had. But the pit call ultimately was what let you guys flip that at the end. Was that? spur of the moment was that you know as as the final stage played out what you saw as your only chance i mean what what all went into behind the decision um no i I think you know honestly we we all were talking you know as as teammates what lap we were going to pit and i thought that was the lap we were pitting on um end up being (laughs) end up being a lap early but i didn't i didn't it didn't end up hurting like i don't think it hurt them we passed them on track like uh, he had an enough race car and, and and William did an amazing job of being aggressive and the lap car is just perfectly and and he went and took the lead so um yeah I mean I appreciate everybody saying it's the pit call but I really look at, at William is, is is driving from fifth to first and those first couple laps after the after the tire change and that's I mean he's just uh he's on it he was on it today and yeah we didn't qualify well yesterday but our race car was was really good in practice we were really happy with our race car last week um just kind of was just a, a really good you know, workman's type day last last uh, on Easter Sunday, but um, this is this is big steps for us at Short Tracks. We uh, we stunk there last year, so um, we're we're working our way to uh, to what we need to have for the for the playoffs, which are you know the the championships won at Short Tracks. Go up front to uh, Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. This is for Jeff and maybe Rudy if you have uh, something you want to add to this. Uh, Jeff, you noted earlier just the struggles here last fall. And for as much success as as, as Hendricks had at Martinsville, I would say that was a race where you guys got punched in the face. And so I would ask, what is it like to be at Hendrick Motorsports when you get punched in the face? (laughs) Uh, Well, it it happens. It definitely does. But I... I think most of us in life, right, when we when we when we struggle, we have challenges. I think those are sort of the lessons you learn the most from. Um, and I know that's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. And 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 that's what I I know I've experienced that myself. And in, in, in you know going to a track, especially when you go to a track that you think you should run good at, you know you feel like you've run good in the past and you don't, um, and it gets you scratching your head. But you know the best rise to the occasion. They 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 take that. Uh, and um, and and they work really hard to make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's what I see in Rudy and, and William and this team. Um, you know that they weren't going to settle for that. And and you know what whether they came here and just threw something at it that they that you know failed, but they weren't going to come back here the way that they were before. They were going to come here with you know something that was different and something that they felt like they could um, succeed with. And, and if they didn't, they're going to learn from it. And, you know, that's – I mean, even the pickle, whether he came in the lap he was supposed to or not, 
it was still risky, right, to come in under green. And, and our, our group started the cycle in a way. I mean, there are a couple that came before us, but they, they were behind us, right? So, um, you know, I love the risk taking and the confidence and the communication, not just with Rudy and his team, but the way that they're communicating with their teammates to, uh, to make some of those calls. Yeah, all I'm going to add is that, you know, when you, you kind of see our strength off of turn two today, you know, and um, we have all those people pushing for us. And uh, that's what it was, <clears throat> uh, you know, all off season. You know, you have all those employees, all their families, all the hard work over the off season. It wasn't an off season. It was it was hard work and uh, working harder than we do during the regular season. So um, when, you know, if I was a competitor and looked up off of turn two and saw all those people there, you know, I'd be intimidated by that. And, and we get uh, get pumped up by that today. It was it was pretty amazing coming out of the trailer and getting ready to do adjustments and all those people already there, seven buses worth of people, 1,500 people. So just, just proud to have all those people behind us and helping us. And, and also for you, Rudy, is certainly this has been quite a run for you guys since last year with – nine wins in 44 races which in an era of supposed to be parity that's a remarkable record um how do you feel like what how how what william has done to be able to get to this point and also for you because it you know just as you talk about the 1500 people if he doesn't get better you don't get better then some of those opportunities slip away what is, what is it that you both have excelled at or gotten better at in the last year plus to take advantage of these situations yeah i think it's the experience of our team getting together and getting used to racing each other so this is this is start of year four you know and um we've always believed in each other we've had each other's backs more and more but sometimes you got to prove it you know and then then the team just grows with you and 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 that's just what it is but you know we we're, we're gonna enjoy this for a little bit but i could already see the determination on his face and i'm already thinking about texas a little bit so um you know we just i just you're just afraid to I'm afraid that, you know, you're not going to be good enough to keep your job, you know, and that's that's how I race and work every day. Keep so. thinking that way, Rudy. Yeah, yeah. It's a good negotiating tactic for me. <laughs> Thank you. We'll stay up front to Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, Shock Sports, for Jeff and Rudy, if you want to answer this as well. Uh, William could drive through traffic and nobody else could. So what's it? How does how does that happen? And what, you know, what did you see he was able to do that no way else seemed to be able to do today? Well, I wouldn't call it that easy, Bob. Uh, I was sitting down there in, in turns one and two. I was on the five box today and and had a great view of it. And I saw how William was driving and, and everybody, you know, driving through there. I, I'll say a couple of things. Um, one, I mean, it, they had a great race car and confidence in practice. I talked to both Rudy and William and other guys, and they were all felt felt good about their car. And even though qualifying didn't go well, and you're deep in the field, you know, you got 400 laps to try to get there. Um, they also have an amazing pit crew that that you know I think they can rely on. So you got to rely on every aspect of your race team to go do that, and you got to do it one at a time. You know, one one position at a time, uh, one decision you know at a time, one lap at a time. And so yeah, I saw William pass cars, and I, I was impressed. That the first run. You, if you notice, you know, the, the groove wind up, laid some rubber, and it seemed like more cars could pass in that first run. And so they made a good, good, you know, step there. I don't know what kind of adjustments, you know, I, uh, that, that Rudy made on that first stop, but they had a good pit stop, right, and, and made another little chunk. It's like just these little chunks they kept taking all day long. The time when he pat, truly passed was that last green flag stop right and and i think what's really interesting about that is if if you just think of not having double file restart to to go try to pass but because you're fighting the guy on the outside you're fighting for your position the guy behind you but when it's just one-on-one -on -one with you i don't want to call it clean air but cleaner air um i think it really showed whose car had the strengths you know, and, and I think William had been working all day long, searching different lines, working with that. And, and it, you know, I think it really showed up there. And the, after that green flag stop, I mean, he was able to turn underneath some guys and clear them. And um, it, right then I was like, I knew his car was good, 
but wow, you know, I, I, I was super impressed. And then I thought, okay, he's going to burn the tires off of it. He's gone too hard. He's stretched it out too far. And the, the 11 start putting heat on, on the 5, and here comes the 12. And we're in lap traffic, and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, 50-something to go. And uh, that was right. I went from 60 to go, getting emotional, to 50 to go, going, oh, God, we're not going to win this. <laughs> um, but... Um, but he just, you know, he did an incredible job working traffic and, and keeping the tires on it. And, um, you know, he's, he's just driving with confidence right now and, and, and using his ability. So it's it's fun. It's fun to watch, you know. And, and um, yeah, I just, you know, keep. I'm going to go through it some more a- after I leave here, I'm sure. because. But to me, that was the moment, right, like Rudy said, passing those cars in, you know, in that opportunity, getting by the 11, right? But I didn't think he was going to be able to go up there and get by the nine and five like he did, but he did, you know? And, and so how he did that, you'll have to talk to this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, the first run of the race was, you know, and it usually is here. If you have your balance, right, you can drive and pass some cars. And, um, and I was, you know, praying that we hit the balance and, uh, and that we had a green flag run and we did that got us in the hunt and everything after that, like Jeff said, it's just, just little bits. Uh, once you get in the top eight, there's not enough difference. It's just, uh, try not to make, make a mistake. And I think we had one bad run. Stage two was our worst run of the day. We lost the spot. Um, and everything else we just kind of started working on it and going forward so you also when you start further back you actually get some advantage because you get you're not afraid to work on your car um you know that what it takes to pass people a little bit more than if you you know start first and third it's it's uh sometimes you're scared to, to mess with your stuff too much so um it was a it was an advantage for us to to go through the field that way um in different little spurts uh, the only other thing i want to add to that is i was what i was alluding to earlier i sat down there in the corner and i watched how difficult it was for him to pass cars like i mean it didn't come easy there was there was plenty of times where he was stuck right i mean uh, you know just once behind his teammate another time behind some other guys and just kept working and working and working and you know whether you cool your tires down come back whatever it was and then then and then there at the end and that long run the, the lap cars right i mean the the that that gets frustrating and you know you're you, you know that you got a good race car and you know that you got a decent lead but now you can't you know pass somebody because they're wanting to stay on the lead lap they're fighting you hard and uh you know just keeping your cool about you in that situation situation i think was was pretty critical in that in that moment okay as you see we have our race winning driver william byron here as well any more questions for jeff or rudy all right we have time for two more we'll go davy and there and then we'll cut loose jeff and rudy and get to william i think uh jeff i think we have a couple more for you jeff oh sorry when i hear you say that i felt like we were that was like basically throwing the checkered flag sorry (laughs) You jumped the restart. I did. I jumped. (laughs) He didn't. I wanted him to, but he didn't. (laughs) I'm by the book. (laughs) Good for you. Sorry, Jeff. Davey with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I assume that you guys uh, have talked to Mr. H by now. Oh, yeah. What was the reaction from him? Yeah, it was. He clearly had a lot going on with people at home. Um, You know, people texting him because I when I called him, and he picked up right away. I like all I heard was background noise and then I was I was like are you there are you there are you there and he's like yeah 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 I'm here I'm here oh my god that's amazing you know so he uh, he was just super excited um so proud and you know he had he had I mean you guys may have heard you know about having the knee surgery and he's super bummed out that he couldn't be here um and and you know just he kept texting me throughout the whole race and the whole day you know we were sending him videos of the folks up on the hill and the cars and the guys all in the same uniform and and just all weekend long he was just really really happy with the way that we were coming here to celebrate you know this this moment and then throughout the day it was you know and he's super competitive right so so it's man cars are looking great we got good speed and then it was what happened why are we you know fading <laughs> you know uh so it's just it's just real up and down uh in in that sense but um at the end i'll be honest i didn't look at my phone i didn't want to look at my phone i didn't want to do anything other than just hold my breath and wait for it to be over uh but but i, I when i did talk to him 
you know he was he, yeah we just we just had a great moment of of just kind of in in awe and shock about even as much as he's accomplished and this company has accomplished when we do things like today especially something that's never been done before the one two three finish at martinsville um he's just so humble and appreciative and and i love that about him and then all i wanted to do was find this guy because uh, i know how much he wanted to talk to him to say thank you and you know, he's so busy doing burnouts and banging the nose off the wall and <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, uh, so I finally got the phone, you know, to to William. So that was that was awesome. What did he say to you guys, William and Rudy? Uh, I I never remember. I don't know. It's such a blur, <laughs> and that's not. I can By the way, that's a quote of the day. I cannot wait to tell Rick. Hey, Rick. By the way, William never remembers what you say to him I'm when so he wins. <laughs> I don't remember. I just black out the, from from checkered to obviously hitting the wall and the burnout. I I don't know. Something was going on. <laughs> yeah, our, our conversation, um, my conversation with Rick always happens after we get the all clear and the handshake from uh, Brad Moran. So that's uh, that's how it goes. That's how he how he takes it with with me. So we take a phone call and it's usually pretty special, but we haven't got that far yet. Thank you. And we'll take uh, one more for either Jeff or Rudy right here. This one's for Jeff, uh, Damian Sorlet with Roman Up Times. That last caution comes out. Did you have flashbacks of 2012 when you and Jimmy had the field covered? Late yes. caution comes out, late restart. And were you just hoping that the third Hendrick car stayed out to make sure you didn't have a dive bomb going into turn one? And the fourth. Uh, yes. I mean, I was just... Uh, I mean, you, I'm sure you saw me. I jumped up off the you know, pit box practically off the side. Um, I'm sh I can't. I don't know how Rudy stays so calm. You should have seen me in the car. I watched yeah. him. I watched yeah, his brakes right, fail yeah, right next to me. I'm like, yeah. Oh, what this what is did great. you do to him when you went by? Um, but um, so, of course, I did because that, that was a, a moment that still haunts me to this day. Of course, I remind Boyer he could have had a second clock had he not screwed that up. But um, but I mean, I'm listening on the radio and hearing these guys communicate, you know, and, and it's just so cool to listen to them talk about, you know, what we have to do, not just to try to win the race, not just try to get one, two, three, but, but you know, how, how to you know, bring this home for the company. And, and, but most of it was them talking about what's everybody going to do? What are we going to do? What's every, and, and I think right away, and they have all these thresholds of laps to the end and kind of what the best options are. But I think right away they all wanted to stay out and were planning to stay out. But it still was all about what others did. And when the 11 was kind of the only guy that came down, I mean, I think right then and there we all took a bit of a sigh of relief, a small one. Um, because still had to get through the restart but we were getting through a restart with guys on similar tires right that thing that happened that day was we were the only two and i think tires were a bigger deal back then and everybody had new tires behind us. so we knew we were gonna lose i didn't know we were all gonna wreck down turn one <laughs> but um uh so but then i think the first thing in my mind was all right we just need one one green white checker restart right because denny could come hard and fast on those newer tires and and you know depend on how the lineup is if you have one or two or you know a second or a third then then it could have been a whole different outcome so i was super happy when they went through one and two they went through three and four and he took the white flag at that moment i was like okay i think we got the win are we going to get one two three and I, I i will say I, I loved all the fight all of our teams had in them today because i saw both Chase and and Kyle fighting hard to to you know I don't know if they're fighting hard to try to finish second maybe hoping <laughs> something happened they could win but they, they to me I looked at it as they're fighting hard to bring home a one two three. Okay, Jeff Fruity, appreciate it. Congratulations on this historic win. Great job, driver.